thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thank, thank you. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So um, our podcast is about your journey in the music industry and how you got to where you are today. Cool. Cool. Where are you at? We're in San Diego, California. Nice. Where are you at? <laughs> Long Island. So we're... Oh, really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> are you originally Either from... End. Yeah. Are you originally from uh, New York? Uh, uh, born in Ohio, moved around a little bit in the Midwest, um, and then settled in New Jersey, and then kind of made my way to Long Island through New York City. So <laughs> I've been out here on the East Coast for a long time. What part of Ohio did you grow up, or were you born in? I have family there. Uh, I'm just curious. Oh, you do? Yeah. Uh, Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My my family is in Cl the Cleveland area. My uncle though went to Ohio State, so I've been to uh -huh. Columbus a few times. But yeah. Yeah, we've been to the Cleveland area a few times. I love it out there, and uh, we had a family in Chillicothe. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's, it's I'm not sure. I, I, I know like my family is from like the Illyria area. Like I guess it'd be more West uh -huh. Cleveland. I'm not, yeah, yeah but I don't know very much. <laughs> right on. Well, how did you get into music? <laughs> well, uh, my brother came home from a, a you know, as an elementary school. My brother came home from the elementary uh, band and he, he played trumpet and he sat next to his buddy and they played trumpets. And I was in the band too. I played like the baritone. But he came home one one day and he said, "Let's start a band." He said, "I was in band today, and I and I turned to the trumpet player. I said, you can't play Kiss on a goddamn trumpet.'" <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> this was in 1976, 77, and uh, and he said, "Brady, you got to play the guitar." I said, "Okay." He's my older brother, so I just kind of did what he wanted me to. <laughs> And next thing you know, we, you know, we, it, you know, it was the, in the era of garage bands. Everybody had a, in the neighborhood had a band, you know? Uh -huh. So, um, so next thing you know, we learned strutter, we learned smoke on the water and we learned like, uh, you know, uh, some other Zeppelin song and we were off to the, off running, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you said that was, what, what, how old were you guys when you started that band? So I was, I was 76. So I was, I was uh, in like uh, seventh grade going into okay. seventh grade um and i you know the cool thing about that time is that we, we worked at it and then two of those guys actually in that band went on uh and i still make music with today um and they were part of the band that uh, my first the rock band from good homes um mm -hmm. But so, so yeah, so this is 76, 77 in New Jersey, and we were just a little garage band, but, but, but we, then we just started playing at clubs, and, um, and there was one club in town that I don't think I was ever of age, and I played there, you know, <laughs> I was never of age when I played there. He, he, he'd greet me at the door, and he'd say, he said, Brady, are you, are you of age yet? And I said, no, and he said, well, put the beer in the back of the amp. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so, those were the days right um no but i guess my point is that you know we go out we just kind of made a little little living a little uh, part-time thing you know just playing around from clubs and um and bars and, and and things and then um and then that that band dissolved you know we we all went to college but after college um the two of the guys said hey man come on let's <laughs> you know we stayed in touch in college mm -hmm. and then we uh and then we said you know moving to new york and brooklyn let's give it a go so that was like 1986 that we you know <laughs> gave you it an official move. Yeah. yeah and that was from good homes that was the band yeah and, and eventually guys... sorry go yeah. ahead no it eventually became from good homes yeah okay and were you signed and touring and everything uh, well, it took a while. We, uh, like I said, 86, and then I think we got signed in uh, 90, uh, I want to say like three or four. Um, oh, wow. So you guys were like really grinding for a while and, and then even did yeah. like the record deal yeah. and the whole thing. Well, wow. what we did is, we, yeah, we did. And we, um, I, you know, we were in that, that, um, 
that that's that's seen that grind that a lot of people do they move to the city they get day jobs and then they rehearse at night and they get the gigs and and we're and we're wheeling our drum set down bleaker street to play for free at kenny's castaways you know like yeah like they're doing all those things <laughs> <laughs> and and you know you're you're not making any money and and it's and it's and it's exhausting so the 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 singer todd shaper he said why don't we let's just look for a house out in new jersey uh, you know, we're familiar with that area. We find a place where we can all three of us move in and we find a local gig or a couple local gigs and we can pay the rent with that and we can just start, you know, working and playing. And so we found this <laughs> crazy house in Upper Greenwood Lake, New Jersey. And and sure enough, we moved in and we just put all the equipment in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> And then we started making calls from the kitchen to, to booking agents and, and anybody and clubs like we call a club up in Maine and we say, hey, can we play there? And they're like, well, you're in New Jersey. Like, like, you really want to come up here and play? We're like, yeah, man, we'll be there this weekend. We're coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. It was like cool. And cold and calling venues the- and booking your own tours. Yeah, and that's how it started. And then we we um, we just started uh, playing, you know, wherever we could play. And um, I forget how, but we I, I saw that that um, there was a guy down in Washington D.C., Scott Clayton, who was booking some local um, clubs. And I called him up and I sent him the demo. And and then that was our first booking agent. And then now he's the head of like creative agency. I, he's he's a he's a big wig out there. Oh wow. <laughs> But he gave us a shot. He said, you're calling me from your kitchen? He said, once again, he's like, you want to come down here and play? He's like, kind of, like what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> well, the other, I mean, it obviously the, led to a record deal. Um, so, Well, and I, I think that was, that was my point of this. Is like, it, it really was kind of just like one little step at a time, you know? But what really was great for us was just having that time together to focus in the in that house and and to write. And also when we had when we had those local clubs that we had to go play to make the rent, that we were able to build a following because we would be at the club, Jigs's musical steakhouse. We'd be there every Friday night. And so we'd be practicing for that gig, and then we'd have that gig, and then more people would come out, and it was just it was some crazy, crazy nights there, but but people who have seen us there have been, you know, um, lifelong fans, you know? So mm-hmm. it really was a great, um, you know, it was a natural way of doing it. We didn't think about it because we were just doing what we loved and we had the the time and the, we didn't have commitments and we could do that. But it was it was a great way to, to build the career with a, with a really strong foundation underneath because mm-hmm. one thing naturally led to the next thing and, and you had the support underneath. So once we, once we got that first booking agent, then we, you know, and had some songs and somebody else heard about us, then we made a demo tape um, and then we got a manager from, from, you know, those gigs that were out in New Jersey became gigs in New York City and, and the following kept, kept uh, growing. And then um, a manager, Jane Friedman, who'd worked with uh, Patti Smith and um, John Cale and uh, Michelle Schacht. Um, she, her office saw us playing down at um, Bleecker Street at the Speakeasy. And, um, and so she started to manage us. And then, and then that's how we just, uh, and, then, and then she took over and she had this great strategy of just, you know, picking a club in New York City and not, not leaving that club until there's a, a line down the block, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and that kind of patience was, you know, something that the, the band had a hard time <laughs> accepting, but it paid off because that the Continental grew into the wetlands. And then the, the line at the wetlands drew, drew the record company and we actually got signed out of the wetlands like um, RCA and, and Peter Robinson came to the wetlands. But then the wetlands grew to Irving Plaza and that was, um, you know, uh, we actually hold the, uh, the, the consecutive sellout record for Irving Plaza with 13 consecutive sellouts. <laughs> oh, wow, that's cool. And you know what it was? It was the it was a couple of bus loads that would come in from New Jersey, and they would. They, they, we have a song called Charlie Hogan about our biggest fan. So they call it the Charlie Hogan Express, and they would just rent these buses. They get people to get on them. They could drink. They could do whatever they wanted, and they go to the show. And they it, it was just. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's really it was cool. really cool. Yeah, yeah it was great. 
<laughs> <laughs> Did that guy still what, come to your shows? The, the guy the song's about? Hell yeah. <laughs> well, no. What has happened is that everybody thinks they're Charlie Hogan now. So. Oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, then how did the rock and roll career turn into kid songs? <laughs> I had kids. <laughs> oh, really? So that's kind yeah. of what happened? That was the first thing that happened. And then, you know, the, the cycle of the, the record company cycle kind of went around the circle and, and we got to a, a, a really nice spot. Um, around that time, you know, this is when the, the new kind of jam band scene was developing. Dave Matthews would come up and open up for us at Wetlands and we'd drive down to Charlottesville and open up for him, Hootie mm -hmm. and the Blowfish and um, all these bands were, you know, we were lumped in that same group. Um, and then we had a nice run up until 1999. Um, and then we, we decided to call it quits. It was, uh, we, we lost the record deal and we were kind of back to square one in terms of getting together and just um, making our own record and, and going out independently. And I think the traveling was really hard. At, at that point, I started a family and um, a few others in the, bands had, in the band had some, some commitments as well. And, um, you know, we've, we've been at it for a long time. <laughs> and we really did accomplish some, some good things. And um, so, so anyway, so at that same time that, that From Good Homes was dissolving, I, had, um, I started a family and just naturally just started singing songs for my kids in the living room, you know, about just being a dad and, and, and whatever they were <laughs> experiencing. And then um, because I didn't have a job with From Good Homes or to do anything, I just started to ask around New York City, like, where can I play, you know? And, <laughs> and in New York City, everything accelerates pretty fast. So one thing led to another and you see someone in the elevator and next thing you know, you're playing at their school and you're doing this. <laughs> and, and at that time, I think my motto was, I mean, because it was all so new and I had no idea, um, was just to, to accept every gig, <laughs> every gig possible and then see what I liked and what I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, so were you playing like original songs that you'd written, like original children's songs? Well, at that point, I didn't know what I was going to play. And I was yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, standing in front of these kids, like, okay, today I'm going to try this and then that. So, so yeah, I was playing kind of a mix, but, but you realize in front of the kids, you really did have to keep them engaged and, um, and so, so you incorporate, uh, you learn some things. And I actually learned like, you know, a lot of the old rock and rollers like uh, James Brown and Bruce and, you know, they all incorporate these things to get people I I involved in, in interaction, you know? So I, mm -hmm. I kind of used just a lot of those tools. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And then is that how you <laughs> met uh, Lori Berkner too? Was through the kid songs? Yeah, we, um, I, yeah, at that same time, actually, um, I was living on the Upper West Side, and so is she. And um, but I, I made my first album, I guess, in two thousand. Um, and then I walked over to the local bookstore, and uh, you know, hey, do you want to put this on your shelf? And, and right there, I see Dan Zane's uh, brand new kids record and Lori Berkner's kids record. So, so just around that time in two thousand, it was. I, I was starting to take notice of of the scene, you know, and mm -hmm. and some of my peers that were in the business. Um, and then it was years later until I, um, and we became friends and, and uh, we opened up for her in Central Park one time for a free concert that was, I don't know, 10, they had to close the park because she drew so many people. Like there were 10,000, 15,000 people. It was absolutely nuts. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it was crazy. So, um, but then later on, I think in 2000, 11 maybe I joined her band or 12 um, uh, she gave a call because you know I play bass with From Good Homes and with the little band that could I play guitar so she said mm -hmm. you know um, I, I, I need a bass player right now <laughs> you want to do a couple gigs and fill in and then um, see how it works out and then it was, it was just great it was such a, a, a nice um, I love I love what she does and I love the band and and it's just, it was and I also love just getting back and playing the bass again too so it, it was a good fit. Mm -hmm. And then tell me about the Grammy nominations. You had what three Grammy nominations? And those yeah, were we for have... your own original songs or for, for what they yeah. were like in the kids in the kids realm. Yeah, the kids realm and and all the kids records are original kids. You know they're all songs. original songs. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know that's one of the things that we really try to bring to the table is um, we have a fantastic band too, the little band that could, the, um, 
the drummer and the bass player toured with uh, Springsteen's uh, Seeger Sessions band. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and the keyboard player has played um, on Broadway in Hairspray and with Odetta and and uh, and the other other uh, Claudia and Liz have been playing all you know they have great careers as well in the music business. So, you know, I re we really focus on. Um, I mean, you know, I was playing you know regular grown up quality music. I didn't want to just you know, <laughs> you know. It's 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 not something you you, you <laughs> your body will let you do. <laughs> I you strive to write the best songs no matter who you're writing them for, and, and especially for kids. I I felt like man, if there's someone you're gonna write, try to write some really good quality stuff for. It's for the the the, the these young kids and their and their parents, and give them something that the parents are gonna love and and kind of feel familiar to them, and also that the kids are just gonna. Um, uh, you know, hopefully gonna, gonna love as well. Um, so yeah, so, um, so the Grammy nominations were, were uh, in 2000 and um, I think 10 or 11 mm -hmm. uh, was the first one. And we were really surprised because it was a very, we were, we were very independent at that point. I mean, we're still very independent, but we were even more independent. <laughs> like we were in diapers, like we were barely walking, you know? So, <laughs> um, and, you know, we just, we were just really proud of the record that we made. And, um, and the funny thing is with that record, um, it was the first one that the little band played all kind of all together. And we did it kind of old school uh, in a studio, just playing, um, and I got um, somebody recommended um, Larry Campbell. Do you know Larry, who who has played on a million million records? He's just a, a beautiful musician, and he's played with he toured with Dylan's band, and um, and he plays with his wife Teresa. And um, anyway, Larry uh, played some amazing stuff on the record. He played some slide. He played some dobro and some fiddle. And uh, and we were sitting there during a break. And he just looked at me and, he, you know, when, sometimes when people look at you and say things, it's just like, it was just kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of weird. Like he said, <laughs> you know, you should, you should submit this for a Grammy. And I, and I looked at him like, well, okay. Like I have no idea like what you're talking about. I mean, I've always watched the Grammys on TV and I see right. someone up there, you know, it's like, <laughs> like, okay, uh, well, you know, coming from you and touring with Dylan and, and, and all the things you've done, okay, I'll look into that. So I looked into it and, and we just submitted it and we, you know, we just did, um, we just tried to get the word out and, and connect all the dots and let a lot of people hear it. We were really proud of it. And, and the next thing you know, we, <laughs> we, we checked, the, checked the list that year and, and my wife Bridget saw us on the, <laughs> Well, amongst the nominees, and she just kind of fell to the floor. She couldn't believe it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, wow! What an accomplishment! Really, yeah, yeah, it felt really great, you know. And just to just to be able to put something, you know, put something together that we felt really proud of, and to have that recognition was great. <laughs> yeah, were you able to attend the award show and everything? Oh yeah, yeah. It, we 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 went out and. <laughs> Grabbed as many as we could in our entourage, try to rival all the stars. And <laughs> <laughs> That's it's cool. Fun. That's yeah, really cool. So yeah, and they, they throw a really nice party the day before, then they, then they throw an after party, and you get to see the event. So it's, it's just a real treat, you know? And, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and it's also great just to be there with the band and, uh, and you know, experience the moment. Yeah, definitely. And you've been working on some new music, right? For like, uh, with with songs across the pond. Is that new? Yeah, that's. Uh, it was just the the album was just released uh, so July thirty first. Okay. Yeah, so it's out there, and um, it's a new. It's 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 an it's a it's my eleventh eleventh record. So um, so we've done a, a few with a little band, and um, and this time it's a collaboration with a UK artist, David Gibb. Um, and um, he just emailed me out of the blue a couple of years ago and said, hey, I, I love what you do. And would you want to sing on one of my songs? And I got back to him and said, actually, you know, I was just listening to your record. <laughs> and I like what you do. And sure. Um, and then one thing led to another. We toured the UK um, 
and uh, we started to write and become friends then. And then we just continued the relationship when, when I came home. And next thing you know, we had like, uh, we had a bunch of songs about traveling and friendships and collaboration. And, and uh, we decided to, to pursue it and, and record it and put it out. So <laughs> that's awesome. And so that's what the, the, this new album is. It's yeah. It's yeah. a collection song between the two of you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he would, uh, it was, and it was great. It was so much fun because even if I had a small idea that, uh, you know, I didn't know if it was any good. So I would just like record it and send it over to him. And, and then he'd come back like with a bridge and with a chorus. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> all right, man, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> now I do the same with his like he'd send me some some scrap and some verse and I'd say oh I hear this and that and so it was really fun to work that way and then we made demos that way back and forth um and then I I, I flew over we, we got it in right before um right before this all happened I was over there in January and we recorded oh. yeah right we we wow. spent three days in the studio in January and we knocked out um uh, you know most of the record and then we came home and we did um, vocals kind of in our own home studios and then sent them to um, the, the engineer. And then we actually mixed the record um, during COVID, like in March, um, and, um, but, and then finished it up just all kind of, uh, you know, remotely like that. But, um, wow. but a lot of, it was good that we actually got together to record it. And <laughs> yeah, just before everything kind of got shut down. Did that uh, yeah. have any... Were you guys thinking about not releasing it right away because of COVID or was that not well, a plan? I, you know what? We talked about it, but we both immediately said, no, I wouldn't, you know, I didn't think about that. It's like, and especially with something like that, when it's, um, you know, it's just been happen, happening naturally and organically. Just one kind of stage moved into the next one really nicely. And, and to put that off and then we just be sitting here with this thing that's not out. And I mean, it's it's already there's already such a huge disconnect in the two years that you're getting to like start to work on the songs maybe and then record them and then when you do put out the record you're like okay this is brand new but but i've been working on this thing for two years man. right it's not gonna <laughs> <I> you <laughs> i gotta muster up some enthusiasts right now <laughs> so no it, you know and we figured actually you know well 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 even for us, it was going to be hard to tour anyway because he's in the UK and I'm here. So true. So we we were going to have to kind of solve that problem anyway um, in terms of uh, doing promotion together. So what we've done is that we've done some fa a bunch of Facebook shows together, um, you know, just like you and I are doing right now. And um, and then um, I was supposed to be over there touring. Uh, this month and he's he was supposed to come over in october but we'll have to wait till you know till things are safe out there and then, and then we'll do that but um mm -hmm. but yeah so so it's you know just pump it out there and uh you know <laughs> hope for the best <laughs> sure sure do you enjoy doing the the like live stream shows i actually do i didn't i, I mean you know they're nerve-wracking to to start the, you know and you don't know what's going to work and we did one yesterday and and like the wi-fi was great we even upgraded our wi-fi and then like we're, it's 10 minutes before the show and then the wi-fi is going down and, down. Oh, and of they were course, like right and we were actually going live because we were doing trying to do a little pre-show thing and we're like you know what let's we have to shut this down and like re re restart the the modem you know so so anyway there's a different <laughs> kind of there's a different kind of stress you know but sure. um but i but i do like it a lot and I, i'm surprised that i do i i think what was really fun is I, I was doing a lot of saturday morning shows and then i was doing some lullabies during the evening and then um I think when you have an audience that's not in front of you that you feel like you have to engage every second, you can just, you can, you can sculpt a, a different kind of set list and you can do different kind of songs. And I was really, really being able to dig deep into the catalog and play all those songs and ask the fans for requests and, um, you know, whatever they would want. And, um, and, and then also th that you can, re you can play to someone in Alaska or Texas, or, you know, we have some people in Finland who like to watch us. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's so cool that way. And then you can, you know, you can get into the comments and, and, and stay connected that way. So you still feel connected, which is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's weird, but it is kind of like I, I was saying, I always say is like, it's, it's kind of cool that we can 
have that everyone's so savvy enough now with zoom and so like i can see you and in your house and everything and like there's kind of that cool behind the curtain look but obviously we all want to get outside and you know, know. to live shows and <laughs> not computer shows yeah. but yeah i know yeah exactly it's it's weird and and we've had a few options for some live shows but i i don't you know it's just hard to make that decision and it's like you have to be so careful and it just doesn't feel like it's time yet, you know? Yeah, I, uh, I agree. We'll set to see kind of how this all unfolds, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Brady, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I really thank appreciate you, your time. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. I have one more question. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring <laughs> artists. Ah, all right. Well, I don't know. I, you know, just really just be yourself and, 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 you know, do what makes you, you and, um, and stick at it, um, and have a lot of fun. I, 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 it's, it, I know it's like kind of simple and corny advice, but it really is. Um, I think, um, it, it's a good way to go. <laughs> we, I think of, um, we, we had this opportunity to open up for Bob Weir when he was uh, in Rat Dog and he was doing um, some of his, um, uh, you know, in sideline stuff instead of playing with the dead. And, um, and, you know, that's just one of those dream come true kind of tours and gigs. And we got to know him a little bit and we were at the last show and, and uh, at the after party and, and, and I just asked him, so, you know, you've been doing this for so long. How do you, how do you keep on doing this, you know, and, and staying out there for so long? And he's like, I wouldn't do it if it wasn't fun. He said, I'm just, I'm just having fun. He said, and, and when it's not going to be fun, I ain't going to do it. <laughs> so, you know, whatever you can do to just to have fun with it. Bring me the best word.